In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Teo to create an animated looping gobo to use within your renders. We'll also have a look at how to set this up inside of Redshift. Okay, here we are, and we've got a blank scene. And what we want to do with the Teo is create a plant that we can use to loop. Now for this, I'm just going to go into the Insidi menu, Teo, and we're going to add the default Teo plant tree. That's going to be a good enough tree to use for this. Let's do a couple of things to it. We will go to the plant layers, to the leaves, and I'm just going to make them a bit longer. So in the length, we're just going to increase their length here. Maybe make them a little bit thinner as well. Something like that. Increase that. And then we'll add a few more. So in the main tab, let's increase the count to something like 15. It's good. In the distribution, we'll just angle those up a bit. Okay, so that's all we're going to do to this tree. Now, let's give it a material. So I've pre-made a material, and this is just a standard redshift material with no color and no reflections on it. So it's just black. So put that on there. We'll get a redshift camera. So add the camera to the scene. Go into the camera. We're going to go to the background tab, and we're going to change the background overrides to override and change the color from black to white. So we've got this pure black and white scene here. So let's go in here like this. So that's going to be our gobo. We can go into our tree now and we'll go to the forces tab. Enable forces. It's giving us our wind. Now let's drop down the wind strength slightly. And on the plant levels, we'll go to the leaf and we'll also drop down the frequency and the strength. So if we push play, you see we've just got this nice smooth motion. To loop it, we need to set the loop time to match the timeline time. Now I work in seconds, most people work in, uh, in frames, but I like to work in seconds. So I'm just going to set this to three, so that matches our timeline. So now the loop is going to loop back to the beginning and it's just going to be a seamless loop of that little bit of motion there which is going to be perfect for the gobo okay so that is literally all we need to do just need to render this out render settings i've gone very low on the settings because you don't need it to be too high so in the sampling i'm going to use 0.5 and enable denoising then with the system i've set the buckets to 512 by 512 and output is 1280 by 1280. So let's render this off. It's going to be a quick render. And we will come back once this is actually finished rendering. You can see that's rendering pretty quickly here. Let's pause this video and we'll come back once it's rendered. Okay, that's finished rendering. That took just six, six and a half minutes and here's our looping animation. So what we want to do is look at how we can use this within our render. So we'll close this and we'll close this. And I've got a scene made already here. So we're going to go into this scene and this is the scene we want to use for our render. So let's go into a view that has the redshift viewport. Okay, so this is our render. We want the lighting to cast these uh, the gobo across this surface. So we'll push play so we've got this rendering. And it's a basic scene with just a dome light giving us the current lighting here. So we want to have a spotlight because the spotlights are what use the gobos. So we'll go in and we'll go to the light menu and we'll add a spotlight to the scene. So let's go to the four way view and pull out. So we've got our spotlight here. Let's adjust it. We will bring it out and put it in the position where we want the light to be coming from. Let's move it up, rotate it down. Something like that, that's fine. So there's our spotlight. With the spotlight settings, bring this up, we have our texture option here. And this is where we're going to put our new gobo. So we've got it in the side here, so I'm just going to drag it in and it was rendered out as a PNG sequence. So I'm not going to put it in a path. And then we're going to go in to the sequence options here. There's a little twirl down. Go to the animation tab. 
and then we're going to change the mode to loop and then we're going to enable detect frames so that's going to bring in all of those frames so you can see it's starting to show up a bit there which is good now we can do a few things we can adjust the ex exposure to increase the contrast of that shadow across the wall something like that you can go into the object and we can adjust the cone angle if you want it bigger or smaller so let's go it's quite large something like that and then if you want it softer you go into the details tab enable softness effects gobo and then the softness slider here let's put it up to like 15 you can see that breaks it up quite a lot that's a bit too much let's try eight no, that's even a bit too much let's go down to five okay that's not too bad and then that's going to play with the timeline because it's an animated gobo which is a bit hard to see on here but once you uh, set it up it might increase the intensity of this light as well let's try three so that just to bring it out okay so that's the just the tree there now if you wanted to get something which creates the sort of line effect of a window or blinds you, all you need to do is with your scene add something like a cloner so I've got one already made here and hide it and that creates this and that's going to give you the effect of those blinds as well as the plant casting the shadow across your scene so that's a quick and easy way to use Teo and Redshift to create cool gobo effects inside of your scene.